Good for you, Janet. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the, yeah, I got you. Okay. Well, good evening, everybody. Is everyone having a good night? Good night so far? Good week so far? Yeah, you know. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. Way to keep me humble. Appreciate it. Um, did anybody do anything special this week? Anything you want to share? Uh, testimonies or just something fun? Fun facts? Dad joke? Anything like that? <laughs> Start us off? Cut the ice a little bit? Or break the ice, sorry? Yes. Yeah. Good. And uh, all their kids are there, right? JJ and this one? Good, good. Yeah, we've got to get those kids out sometimes, right? They need it. They need the park, for sure. Um, anybody else? Nothing special this week? Yeah. Good, good testimony. Great, thank you for sharing. What else? Yes, sir. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> Did you say hot tub? Yeah. Man, that sounds good. I'm sorry, what did you say? <laughs> yeah, the deacon, the, the, the a deacon hot tub meeting. Is that what he said? I think that's what I heard, right? Good, that's great. Um, any other testimonies? Anybody want to share anything that, from their Bible reading that they're getting? Their time with the Lord, things they learned this week, whether spiritual or... No? What would you say, babe? You're, we're not that spiritual? <laughs> yes. She can give it a shot, I guess. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's what we're going to be looking at tonight. So good. Um, this isn't spiritual. I learned something uh, yesterday that the, Mino the, the um, Culver's off Randall, they, do, they don't have good uh, concrete mixers like the one in Huntley. So I don't know if anybody's ever, does anybody ever had one of those concrete mixers? I know I was talking to Lynn about it before service. You guys know what I'm referring to, right? You don't know, it's, it's a, like a blizzard, you know, Dairy Queen blizzard. It's there, it was terrible. I was so disappointed. And my wife was like, you're just saying that because you want to go get crumble, huh? And I'm like, no, I'm not saying that. It really wasn't good. Um, anyways, that was my, the one right next to Menards, right next to Menards. Well, no, no, that one's way out there. Yes, Carpentersville. Not that we need to go give them a bad review right now, but um, I just was disappointed. So I might have to go back tonight, see if it's it's better, right? Okay. Anyways. Yes. Oh, amen. Good. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good. Thank you for sharing that. I know there's many of us that are praying, and that's encouraging to us. Yeah. Well, good. Um, I enjoyed Pastor's message on Sunday. My goodness, so convicting. I thought it was, uh, you know, you don't hear preaching like that often, where it's just so focused on the relationship, and I've been thinking about it. The past two Sundays, um, I felt that 
Well, it's exactly what I needed, and uh, I pray that when we hear messages like that, it's so quick, and we get so busy, we have the picnic, and then we have our busy lives, that we, we're quick to forget what's stated, but make sure we have that intentional time with the Lord daily. My goodness, what we're missing if we don't. I'm certainly not going to re-preach his message tonight, or even in this testimony, but um, I've certainly just been thinking and meditating on what he talks about. It's, it's definitely helping me in my walk. So tonight, uh, we're going to be looking at Psalm 119. Um, I started this study on a, on uh, in Sunday school, uh, a couple, cu- well, here and there on, on some, when I've been filling in on, on Sunday mornings. We're not going to rehash um, what we talked about during those two lessons, but I just felt like my heart has been in Psalm 119, so I'm just going to continue it. And so we'll be looking at um, letter B of the, well, not letter B, but Aleph, Beth, their second letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And um, we'll be reading eight verses. Um, we've been reading it, interestingly enough, on, on Sunday morning, having the men come up and read each section, eight verses. Um, when I started this study, uh, we, we, we talked about how the fact that these verses, they, they're not really like a chain link where each verse is connected to the other, so therefore you need to understand the context. Um, it's really, it's, it's, uh, we talked about how each verse has independent value and can stand really on its own. And I gave an illustration of a pearl necklace. While the pearl necklace in its entirety is beautiful, each pearl has its value. And so what we're trying to do through this study is just add pearls to, to our necklace. Um, I find that, well, I'm not a lady, so I don't know if, what I, I would imagine that a, a, a pearl necklace, the more pearls on it, the, the prettier it is, right? Is that true? Is that a true statement? No? Okay. Well, I don't know. I've never worn a pearl, pearl necklace, so talk to me. Is, is, is that true, or is one pearl? So is this going to destroy my illustration, or <laughs> not necessarily? It depends. Okay, so one might be pretty. Um well, how, so men, I'll talk to you this way. When I when I played, when I played football in 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 college and high school, every week they would review the game tape, and um, if you had a really good play or you contributed to the team as a whole that entire week, or you had a sack, you had a tackle, you did whatever you did, they would give you specific stickers to put on your helmet. And uh, any of you guys fans of Ohio State Buckeyes? No, none of us follow football. Okay, basically what I'm trying to say is uh, the more stickers that you have on your helmet, the more it shows that you're maybe a better athlete or you've just contributed more, you've put more effort in. And that can mean many different things. It doesn't necessarily mean you're the top athlete. It might say, well, hey, maybe you just helped encourage your team this week. You brought your team together that week. And so obviously it was the goal of each of the players to add more stickers to their helmet. The more stickers they had, the more contributions they made. And so what we're trying to do tonight with these verses is learn them and apply them and just build on top of it, on top of it. And the more application, the more knowledge you have of the scriptures, it just creates a beautiful necklace for you ladies. And for men, it's uh, a helmet that makes you look like you've contributed, I guess. Um, well, I hope these illustrations made sense. Anyways, um, so that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to try and apply some of these truths to our lives. But let's start by reading Psalm 119.9. And we're going to read all the way to verse 16. And I'll read the verses, I'll try and go slow, let's try and place ourselves in this chapter, in these verses, try and think about what we're reading, Um, and I'll begin. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way, by taking heed thereto, according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee, O let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all of thy judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Let's ask the Lord to bless our uh, our study tonight. Father, uh, without you meeting with us tonight, there's no point to meet. And so we ask that you and your power would illuminate the scriptures to our hearts and minds that we would leave here changed. We're not just here as a club or just to talk about the scripture. We actually want to learn it 
and apply it in this God-forsaken world that we're, we're living in, at least the country's acting that way, Lord. And so I pray that you'd help us in our walk. I pray that we would um, get something tonight that we can take home, meditate, chew on, and think about and apply to our spiritual life. We love you. We thank you for the Bible that's so faithful, Lord. It never changes. It's endured. It encourages us. It feeds us. It does so much for us. I pray that we would be take it seriously. Uh, we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. So the puzzle, the idea that I want to try and pass from this passage to, to our brains is, we started in the first lesson, was how can we have a blessed life? What is a blessed life? And why should you and I even endeavor to have a blessed life? Is a blessed life even worth it? If what the Bible says, is it even worth it? Um, and so these are some of these questions that I want to ask you or I want us to think about as we're going through this. I remember as a child, I would sometimes ask um, my dad questions, and sometimes he would respond with, because. And I would say, well, why? And he would say, because I said so. And I'm sure, you know, looking back, I don't want sympathy for that, right? But I'm sure looking back, he was busy, right? Because I know, I'm sure that's going to happen. I'm going to be so busy, Louie's going to ask me a question, because I said so, right? Or do this because I said so. And I think if we have questions to God, or when we come to the scriptures, we have questions, what if God was to say, do what I said because I said so? Um, but that's not, how, that's not what God does. He, he, in his love, gives us insight as to how and why he tells us certain things. How we can have a blessed life. How we can keep ourselves from sin. He lays it out in the longest chapter in the Bible. He teaches us how we can keep our life cleansed from sin and why we should strive to do so. Why we should learn principles. Why we should come to church and apply these truths. So tonight's principle is simply this. The word of God, when applied, keeps us from sin. That's pretty simple, right? It's not, it's not um, in depth. It's, it's not uh, difficult to, to understand. It's the word of God, when applied, keeps us from sin. How many of you have ever been asked a difficult question before? It's a difficult question, right? I think one of the questions I have that I'm sure there's an answer for it, I'm sure some scientists or some te uh, technician can answer this, but I just think it's, how in the world can I pull up my phone, click a button, and in five seconds I can see my mom's face 2,000 miles away? To me, that just racks my mind. It boggles my mind. How is that even possible? That doesn't make any sense. And I'm sure, like, when I get older, Louis, you know, that question, the difficult question like this, dad, dad, mom, where do babies come from? Like, those are difficult questions that we have to ask or answer. But how many, you've been asked a difficult question, sometimes we don't know how to answer. But here is a question that we have in our, in our passage, in verse 9, the first verse we read, it says, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? Now, on the surface, when you read that question, because we've grown, a lot of us have been in church from some time, we've heard a lot of preaching, we've, we've read a lot of scripture, is wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? It doesn't seem very difficult, right? But as we unpack it, we're going to see why this might be a difficult question or why it's framed in such a way. Now, let's start with that word wherewithal. That's not a word that we use often, right? Wherewithal. Have anybody explained that or said, said wherewithal to anybody this week? In the past month, have you said wherewithal to anybody? No, okay. But you could rephrase this verse in many ways. So wherewithal is how, how long, why, wherewith, what. And so you could rephrase this verse by saying, how shall a young man Man, a, a young man's way be cleansed. Why should his way be cleansed? How long can it be cleansed? With what can it be cleansed? So it's an all, in, it, it creates all inclusive questions. So the phrase young man, it doesn't mean that if you're aged in here, you can just sit back and this doesn't apply to you, right? It do, certainly doesn't mean if you're a woman, don't worry about it. You can look at Pinterest right now and shop, right? It doesn't mean that. Okay, we're talking about young men, but we're going to understand that it applies for everybody. It's implying here that how in the world can a young, inexperienced, inignorant, unknowledgeable young man keep himself from sin? How is that even possible? Meaning, young men are so prone to do dumb things. Think about that. When I was young, well, I know I'm still young, but when I was younger, I did a lot of dumb things foolish things, sinful things, like just ignorant things, right? I would imagine, Pete, looking back in your life, 
in your 18, you know, your teenage years, your 20s, right? It's just young men just do dumb things. I'm sure pastor sees these young men and he boggles his mind. Like, why are these young men doing these things? Okay? The amount of foolishness young people get into without even being taught. They just get into foolishness. So what this verse is saying is if that group can be kept from sin, then it's certainly going to apply to all of us today. If that group can be kept from sin, if their way can be cleansed, our way can be cleansed too, no matter what age of life you're in. No matter if you're aged, middle, whatever. You can have your way kept from sin and, be, and continuously kept from sin. Amen, yes, praise the Lord for that. Now the psalmist is not referring to the past. So he's not saying past sin. He's not looking to be forgiven from sin. He wants wisdom on how to keep his future self from foolishness. And that's a prayer that God will honor. But what I want to do is I want to try and create a foundation of what that word cleansed actually means. And there's a great picture of that word cleansed, which is stated in Psalm 51.4. I'm going to ask some of you to turn to some scripture tonight. Do you guys mind doing that? Are we okay with doing that? Pete, let's start with you. Psalm 51.4. This is obviously David's a confession where he gets his heart clean, but there's a verse in Psalm 51.4 that I like that it's going to help us understand what I mean by cleansed. So go ahead and read that verse really loud, Pete. That last phrase, and be clear when thou judgest. So we're going to look at that phrase, be clear. It's the same word Translated in Psalm 119 that says cleanse. We need to be cleansed according to how God says one is to be cleansed. And to stay pure according to how God says we can be clear from sin and pure from sin. So what I'm trying to say here is be clear, meaning that God is clear on what he tells us. um, And God is very clear on um, how we're to live and our conduct. So when God points out an area in our life that doesn't conform to his standard, and he is clear on what is right and wrong, we must conform. We also understand that when we confess and forsake, we're forgiven from the past of sin, or the, the, the sins in the past, never to be brought up again. It's under the blood. The feeling of guilt and consequences might still be there, but God is clear. His judgments are true. We are forgiven. Do you understand the word picture I'm trying to say here? Be cleansed. God is clear, his facts, not our feelings, right? So the future choices we must make, or the future choices we make must be clear according to God's perspective. Cleansed according to God's perspective, not my own feelings. Sometimes in my prayer time, I'm like, God, I, I, maybe I, I feel like I'm, I don't feel free from sin, or maybe I don't feel um, re-energized. But if we confess and we forsake and, we're, and we come clean, God, it's for, we're forgiven. We're clear according to God's verdict. Does that make sense? But the question today is not the past. It's how can my future self be kept from sin? For his prayer is, God, how can I make the proper choices so that I don't ruin my life? So when I, when I studied this passage um, as I do any time I'm asked to speak, I try to place myself in the story. I try to really think about what's going on here. And I, I, I pictured really a, uh, a young man pondering his life and seeing how many maybe of his peers, his friends, were making dumb decisions, sinful choices. And then at, he asked the question, well, how can my way be cleansed? I don't want to do that. How is this possible? And so the psalmist gives us insight to a question that many of you have today or many of you have had in your life. How can my life, my journey through this life, my choices be kept from foolishness? And God gives the answer. He said, by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Which, again, talks about our principle. The word of God, when applied, keeps us from sin. Now, the first lesson that we had on a Sunday morning, I I talked about how Psalm 119 was as if there was an aged man or an older man that had lived his life and, and experienced so much, and he's kind of at the end of his journey, and he sits a teenager down or a young person down and says, listen, I have a lot of wisdom to share. Just sit down and listen. 
I'm ready to, this is all the things that I've learned over my walk with the Lord, over my Bible reading, over many preaching, to sit and listen. But I want to flip that. I feel like this verse is as a teenager coming or a young person coming and saying, hey, Lynn, or hey, Pete, or, or Nancy, or you know, the, uh, the, the, the people that have lived longer, imagine what a young person coming up to you and say, listen, I, I, have my, I have a notepad. I'm like a sponge. Talk to me. Teach me. Tell me how I can keep my way from, from sin. Listen, you've, you've, you're, you're following the Lord today. You're, you're doing right. Teach me how my way can be cleansed. Imagine, how would you guys respond if somebody did that to you? What would your response be? Maybe it doesn't happen often, but imagine that. You, your heart would be to help this person. And that's what, um, and our response should be, you know, I've learned a lot, but let's go to the scriptures. Let me help you from the scriptures. And, um, you know, Elizabeth, uh, when she was, the church she grew up in, um, the pastor would really harp, or not harp, he, how, how would you put it? He would encourage um, emphasize, emphasize, repeat. He would tell the young people to live in the, in the Proverbs, a proverb a day, right? Have you ever heard that? A proverb a day keeps the sin away. He wouldn't say that, but, but um, there are 31 chapters in Proverbs, typically 31 chapters in, or 31 days in a month. And so stay in the Proverbs. It's got so much wisdom. But I want to point out a few verses in Proverbs. So uh, everybody grab your Bibles. Let's get ready. I'm going to point out a couple people if you have it, because I want to go quick. So, um, Nancy, do you, Miss Miss Kuntz, sorry, would you mind turning to Proverbs 1 8? Um, Lynn, would, can you turn to Proverbs 2 1? Robin, do you, have, do you have a scripture today? Yeah, you brought your Bible tonight? I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> uh, Proverbs 4 20, please. Um, who else? Who would else like to read? Elizabeth, do you have your, your Bible? Uh, Proverbs 6.20. Randy, you back there? You got your, the Bible? Okay. Proverbs 7, 1 through 3. And then Bob, you, you mind reading, right? Uh, 23.26. Proverbs 23.26. Ms. Kuntz, could you start? Proverbs 2 1, whoever's next. Okay, um, next, 420. Proverbs, uh, where are we at? 620. Yes, Elizabeth? Randy, Proverbs 7, 1 through 3. And then lastly, 23.6. I pointed out these verses. There was a specific phrase that you heard in everyone. What did you hear? my son. And there's a reason I pointed this out today, okay? Maybe you're here tonight, and uh, you've been, you, you know, you're here on a Wednesday night, you're, you, I believe you're actively seeking the Lord. You spend time with the Lord, you're in the scriptures, and so maybe the answer or the message today isn't be cleansed from sin. You feel like, no, I, I, I have a genuine heart's desire to serve the Lord. I, I, I don't want, I, I feel like I'm actively applying what I'm hearing on, in my message, Bible reading, okay? That's you. But our heart should now be to instruct others. You would like to now have the influence or you would like to disciple others. But day one of discipleship shouldn't be you better obey God's word because I said so. Or obey God or else. Or we just start preaching and find somebody and that's messing up and just preach at them. What do we see in Proverbs? It's as if a father comes to his son and says, my son, give me your heart. My son, learn from me in a kind, compassionate way. And that's how we need to approach those that are not living properly. 
That's how we should approach our children. That's how we should approach our families, friends, those that are away from the Lord, those that are doing, it's not point out, God's going to judge you. You know, sometimes, yes, they may need that, but sometimes it's better, my son, my daughter, my dear friend, give me your heart. Because people don't know how much, or people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Imagine, I would imagine that, uh, or I don't think that Timothy or Paul responded to Timothy with, do what I say, Timothy, because I said so. No, I'm sure he invested in his life. He cared about Timothy. He poured his heart into him. And then, in turn, what did Timothy do? He, he trusted him. He learned from him. It reminds me of my, it reminded me of my relationship with Larry. You know, a lot of the younger men have, even those in the church, we, we, we learn from Larry because he, we trust him, because we know that he's poured our, his heart into us. So therefore, we're willing to be challenged. We're willing to learn. We're willing to be discipled. So, so do we have a Timothy? Not a Timothy just to preach, oh, listen, I'm going to give you all my knowledge. I'm going to preach at you. No, it's, listen, my son, I'm here to help. I have this knowledge, but first, let's win their heart. And then the challenge is, okay, you're not actively living in sin, but let's find somebody that we can impart these truths to, that we can help guide and direct somebody from ruining their life so that their way can be cleansed. Does that make sense? And so God says, um, well, excuse me, the hope is that we do have a Timothy and that their ears would be open to, our, to the instructions that we want to give them. And so now that, now we actually need to know how we, let's say we do have a Timothy, um, let's try and understand some more of these verses so that we can help them properly. So taking heed thereto according to thy word, let's get back in Psalm 119. Taking heed thereto according to thy word. So the psalmist is saying, I'm going to make God's word the rule of my life and my contact, uh, uh, excuse me, and my conduct. But to make it practical, he's saying what God has revealed to me in my own Bible reading, I'm going to apply it. What God has revealed to me in my personal devotions, what God has revealed to me on Sundays when pastor preaches, I'm going to make it my life's conduct. Complete dedication to God and to his word. Because, you know, some people say, I'm dedicated to God. I love God. I want his will. I want his purpose. But they're not considerate of what he actually says in the, in the word of God. So it's that twofold ded dedication to be effective. It's dedication to God, but also dedication to his word. So we understand that, that uh, there's no physical power physical power in this Bible, meaning if I was to carry this around, do I get any extra blessing um, than if you didn't have your Bible? Like if I carried this all day, does, do I, does that make me special, right? No. If I sin, is there a way for me to like rub this over my heart or mind to make, no, right? Okay. Like when you see people have the rosary, they kiss it. They think that it's supposed to give them some extra blessing, right? Or like when you can see a batter go up to bat, he does this thinking, okay, I'm going to hit a home run now, right? Okay, that's not what I'm, we're talking about here. Um, but spiritually speaking, the Bible is like a sponge. It gives us a special blessing, and we are cleansed when we hear the word of God. There's a verse that says that. Where does your, where does that mind, where does your mind go to when you hear that? We're clean through what? Through the word which was spoken unto you. So we are clean when we hear the Bible. We are clean when we read the Bible. When we apply what it says, when we follow what it says, the blood of Jesus cleanses us and keeps us cleansed, but we need to apply what it says. So let's talk about taking heed. Taking heed means to keep, to guard, to observe, to watch out. Another word that was used, her, used was night watch. So in, in college, I had a job that required me to, um, every couple hours I had to get up walk around the building, and I had checkpoints. I had to constantly check and secure, make sure there was no um, intruders, make sure there were, I had to check these certain pipes, make sure that the uh, pressure wasn't too, too high. And that's what came to my mind when I was thinking about this passage. If I'm to guard, if I'm supposed to watch over, if I'm supposed to be alert to what the Bible says, um, I need to be like that security guard, checking to see if there's areas in my life that are creeping in that aren't supposed to be there. 
So if I want my way cleansed, I need to be on guard. If I want to keep my, from ruin my, ruining my life, I need to make sure that there's nothing creeping into my home or my heart or my eyes or my ears that is contrary to, to what God says, that is clearly stated in the scripture. Does that make sense? Following me? Okay. And so how are we doing with that? Are we on guard? Are we alert? Are there intruders? Are there mice in the home, so to speak, right? That's what we're dealing with lately. Trying to find that hole. I still haven't found that hole in our house. Um, but that's what happens. We, we don't, you know, we're not careful to check the, the, the corners of our home, our own lives, and things creep in that shouldn't be there. And so God says, or the scriptures say, hey, be alert. What you've learned on Sundays, what I've revealed to you by the Holy Spirit in your heart, let's be alert to those things. And then he says, um, and then he says in verse 10, let's, let's glance down to verse 10. He says, wherewithal shall the young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. And then verse 10, he says, with my whole heart have I sought thee. So this speaks of dedication of the psalmist to God and to his will. Now notice the word sought. So it speaks of, or it comes from a Hebrew word that, that means frequency and a real concern. So it was the psalmist's way of life. He didn't just seek the Lord when he needed him. When he was in trouble, it was something that he continually, he sought the Lord because he loved the Lord. He didn't treat God as a genie, as some do. God, where's my three wishes? God, I need something. His time with the Lord was frequent. It was specific. It was intentional. It's like Pastor talked about on Sunday. He sought the Lord. It was his way of life. He sought the Lord with real concern. Now, I have asthma, and um, it's, it's bad. I've had it my whole life. I've dealt with it my whole life. Um, and the other day, I, I misplaced my inhaler. And let me tell you, I got extreme anxiety. Um, Elizabeth knows about it. I, I just kind of panic. My, just everything stops. Like, my mind just is only thinking about, where's my inhaler? Um, and that should be the way that I treat my relationship with the Lord. Not that the Lord ever departs, but I need to actively be f just my mind focused on, on God and, and spending time and be intentional about my time. If I don't have it, if I don't have my time with the Lord at night or in the morning, oh my goodness, I got to go have it. Everything stops. Everything shuts down. I need to go have it. I need to, and it doesn't necessarily, like Pastor said on I'm not trying to re-preach his message, but everything, it's been on my heart so much. It's, it's not necessarily the quantity of time, but it's, it's that quality. It's, are we intentional about it? Does anybody have any thoughts about what I'm saying? You, I feel free to give me any feedback. I'd love that. Um, add to, if you, if you feel that there's something here that you'd like to add to. This is supposed to be more um, interactive. Bear with me here. This thing just shot up to the top. You want me to start over? <laughs> start from the beginning. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, got to find out where I'm at. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, uh, I think I'm right here. Okay. Okay. So the dedication that we're talking about is not only to God, but it's also to the Word itself. Remember, the Psalm 119 is a pa is a is a book in the Bible, the greatest chapter in the Bible, on the Bible. This is the greatest chapter about it. It's, t it's trying to tell you that the Bible is very important. Not the physical copy of it, but the actual words on its page is, are so important to the believer. They're your literal spiritual food. Without it, we would be dead. And so he's trying to emphasize, have a dedication to the Word of God. Be intentional about your time, not just your time in the prayer closet, but also your time reading the Scriptures. And so he says, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart I have sought thee. And then he says, oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. So the word wander, I think at first glance, it, I think we all probably know what it means. It's to stagger, to error, to go astray, to walk away from the faith. That's what he's talking about. But what I found here is, is interesting. It actually means also to sin inadvertently. So I addressed this in our first lesson in Sunday school. 
our reaction when we hear these things is, well, I'm not just, I, I want to know less about the Bible, so I'm not accountable to it. I don't want to read, I don't want to know more so that I have to change more. Um, it's not an excuse. It's certainly not a, a, a good thing. The more I know about God's word, the more I can avoid foolish decisions because then the Holy Spirit can bring up the verses as like an alarm in my heart. How many of you have ever said or done something foolish? Okay. Um, how many of you, uh, can, you, you look back and ha- have you guys ever said this to yourselves? Man, if I only knew that when I was this age. If I only knew that then. And so that's why sin in, inadvertently, don't let me wander. It's saying, hey, let's get into the scriptures. Let's know them so that you don't say that to your older self. Or, excuse me, you don't say that when you're older. Man, I wish I wouldn't have done this. Man, I wish I wouldn't have said that to that person. Yes, sir. Yep, that's why the answer is take heed, yeah. guard it, be on alert. Red lights, alarms coming off when you're, when you're starting to get off that road, right? When, <laughs> how many of you have a car that when you're drifting, it makes that beep, 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 beep sound, right? Okay, some of you, those older, those newer cars, whatever, it's the same thing here. It's, and this is why he's saying, let me not wander from my commandments. I don't want to stray from it, but he's also saying, um, don't, don't let me sin inadvertently. Like, God, just teach me these things now and, and, and get it in my heart now so I won't make dumb, foolish decisions. Now let's look at verse, um, verse 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Now let's look at the phrase, hid in my heart. Obviously this phrase doesn't mean uh, hide it like a secret. Like if somebody asks, like when I asked you today, Hey, what did you get out of your devotions? Or when the pastor asks for a, for a testimony, you say, well, it's not in your business because I'm keeping it a secret. I'm hiding it in my heart. That's not what it's saying, okay? Um, uh, I can explain hide like this. Uh, when, I lived in, when Elizabeth and I lived in California, three years in a row, our AC broke. Three years in a row, right? I'm not lying, okay? Every single year, it broke. And while it was frustrating, I was very grateful that I had a rainy day savings account to pay for the damages. The verse is trying to tell us to get as much scripture you can in your heart so when the day comes, when it gets extremely hot, when you're confronted with the fires of temptation, of sin, or the heat of trials, that you have that rainy day savings account of scripture in your heart to help guide you through. So in a trial, you can be a Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that answered King Nebuchadnezzar, I'm not careful to answer you in this matter. If, God be, if it be so, our God whom we serve, he's able to deliver us from the burning, fiery furnace. He will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. When we have that savings account of scripture that's just poured into our hearts, we're just, we're just loving it, we're applying it, our hearts and ears are open to it. That's what he's saying is he's hide, hide it in my heart, God. Hide it in my heart. Write it upon the table of my heart. And then when temptation comes for sin, you can respond as Jesus. What did Jesus do? He responded with scripture. Why? Because he had scripture in his heart. That's why memorization is so vital. That's why Bible reading is so important. That's why it's the key to Christian life. It's, what God, it's not just read it so that I can say I did my devotions today. I know in college we used to have that. It was like, Sometimes we did our devotions so that somebody would see or that if, if we were asked, we would say, yeah, I did my devos. That's not what it's saying here. It's, hey, life is real. You're going to experience some tough things. You're going to go through some trials. You're going to be tempted with some sin. You need your rainy day savings account for when those things come. And so that's why we have these things. That's why we have our devos. And that's why when you have a Timothy... You can explain to them, well, why would I, why in the world do I read my Bible? Why in the world should I pray? Why should I memorize scripture? 
Well, hey, take him to Psalm 119. Well, let me tell you, hide, your, hide scripture in your heart when these things come. Because guess what? They're going to come. They're going to come. Yeah, we all are. We all are. Sometimes, yeah, for sure. I mean, sometimes I, I, you know, I feel like I have to read my Bible because I have to, you know, and, and, but sometimes those are, hey, it's, di- it's spiritual disciplines, as Pastor tells me. You got to just have spiritual dis- disciplines in your life. Sometimes you just got to do it. Sometimes going through them, it's not, you don't want to go through the motions. You want to just be disciplined because we don't want to act of our feelings. But, but uh, hey, hide these things in your heart. Learn these truths. Um, let's uh, we'll read one more verse. We'll go over one more, maybe maybe two more. We got about fifteen minutes here. Um, the Bible says in verse th- thirteen, "With my lips have I declared all thy judgments of thy mouth." Um, the word "declared" at its surface. What do you think it means? I'm gonna ask you. Make sure I'm getting your minds engaged there. That's not a trick question. Yeah, spoken, just t- talked about, right? To make known, to speak about it to others. And again, it goes back to the exhortation to, to, to be a discipler. You know, I wonder if, if we, if we uh, I know Pastor says, I wonder if everybody in here, you know, just had one person that they were discipling. But what, why don't we do that? You know, what if I came to you separately or you came to me and said, hey, uh, John, I want to disciple somebody. Where do I start? Well, I think we're going to start that soon. And it'd be great if, if, you, if maybe you've been walking with the Lord for some time. Maybe you invest, you pour your heart into getting to know somebody first. And then, hey, the next conversation is I'd like to disciple you. So declare it is to speak about, to make known. Um, but I also find that, you know, I'm sure that if you were to find somebody to disciple, you'd have to study, right? But you don't want to just show up and, all right, let's talk. Right. Um, when I when I uh, I find that when I study for something or for a message or you know a, a speech or whatever, I bet that I learn more in this study than you're probably getting right now. Right? This is naturally it naturally happens that way. So guess what? My my rainy day savings account is probably a lot uh, more just on this truth because I've just been in, in um, just been deep with it right for the past couple of weeks. So hey. If you become a discipler, you're going to study what's going to happen. That rainy day savings account is going to start developing in your heart for your time. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So again, the easy way to hide scripture in your heart is just to study and to teach someone else. But what I also like about this word declared is it has the idea of recounting or reciting. Guess what? We have to come back day after day and recite these truths from the Bible. Recount the blessings that we have, the privileges that we have in this book. The word declared also can be translated, listen, making a written record. You know, something I've done lately is journal in my Bible time. Uh, Journal answered prayer. Journal things that the Lord has been teaching me in my Bible time. Um, journal things that God teaches you on Sundays in Sunday's messages. It's a, God is saying, or it's a written record. You're making a written record so that you can recite, you can recount. Again, so you can hide these things in your heart. It allows us to go back through the years and recount and recite all the things that God has done and taught you. May I, may I encourage you, do the same. Could you imagine on Sunday, pastor's preaching and everybody's just writing? I think, he, what, you think it'd freak him out? You think it'd freak him out? No? I think it is. <laughs> That'd be interesting. I wonder if we should do it. Let's all do it. Um, and this last one, uh, I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much in all riches. And there's people that live their life for, for wealth. 
and they're so excited. When they, I, I would imagine seeing somebody, you know, win the lottery, how their reaction would be, right? Yeah, amen. Imagine if, if at home, you, you, your, your devotions tonight, you read something and you just started, I won the lottery! <laughs> I'm so excited! No, but literally, just uh, a picture for average, it, the, the psalmist is saying, listen, I care more about the, this Bible and what I've learned in, this, in these scriptures and these truths than any, any, any money or wealth I could ever possess. My goodness. And this is why this Bible is so important. It, it, it becomes then not just something we have to read. It becomes a treasure. It becomes something that we look forward to. You know, I understand that sometimes it's difficult to read through Numbers and Deuteronomy, and, and, and sometimes we can't understand what's being, sometimes there's tough passages. I'm going through Romans right now, and it's tough sometimes. Sometimes it's difficult, where you're just like, man, what did he say right there? Um, keep at it. Take heed. Keep hiding it in your heart. Keep reading it. Keep going back to it. We don't worship the physical Bible, but we worship the God of the Bible. The words that are in here have the ability to change lives. My life's been changed. I don't know about you, but my life's been changed by, by the scriptures. I'm, I'm sure you could all give testimony to that. You wouldn't be here if that wasn't the case. And so what do we do with a lesson like this? It's a question that I hear often here preached is let's have an importance. Let's create a sense of urgency how we treat the Bible. Uh, let's hide these things in our heart. Let's be quick to instruct, teach others, um, not preach at them, but maybe win their, win their hearts so that they're ready and willing to listen. Find a Timothy. Be ready to disciple somebody. I think that's it. Um, okay. Any anybody else want any feedback? Any uh, anything you want to add to this? Makes sense. Rapish, Frank. It's good, right? Um, you know, it's challenging, convicting, and I'm grateful for these verses. I'm certainly grateful that I know that um, you know you're every every day we're confronted with choices, uh, some to sin, some trials, right? And I think about these verse. Where how, Johnny? How, how can your way be cleansed? If you don't want to ruin your life, if you don't want to mess up, nope, what does the scripture say? Take heed to what he's told you. Take heed to what you know now. Pay attention to it. Like a, like a security guard, pay attention. Hide it in your heart. Hey, there's a lot of wealthy people out there, but guess, re rejoice more in these, in these words. And then declare them, recount them, recite them. Believe them to be true. Amen for the Bible, amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much uh, for the scriptures. Thank you for, um, man, my goodness, the, your, your diligence to, um, to give them to us, Lord. Everything in here has been given as a gift from you to us. And God, forgive us for our complacency that we have with this, with this book here. Um, Lord, I pray that we wouldn't beat ourselves up for lack of time, but that we would just be intentional and serious about um, what we have in our hands. There's people across the world that would give anything to have a couple pages of this Bible or be able to freely, freely read it, study it, say it out loud, but they can't because they would be killed. And we are so great. We're just so free in America. I pray that we wouldn't squander that freedom and we take it serious. And forgive me for my complacency, Lord. I pray I would, too. I'd be a hearer of this message and a doer. Uh, we love you, Lord. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. I think we're about seven minutes early, so you guys are free to go. Oh, sure.